AR, augmented reality, has captured the spotlight of the virtual reality world in the past decade. Developed in the early 90s, AR is an interactive tool that puts the digital or virtual objects into the user's perception of the real world, such that the two blend in seamlessly. Due to the endless possibilities one can create in the digital world, we can find the technology of our being used in a wide spectrum of applications, spanning from advertising and gaming, to custom product design and professional training. In this episode of DIY series, we are going to design and build in our Android app from scratch. I am going to show you how to install and set up your programming platform and guide you through in building your very first augmented reality app. To run an augmented reality application, we need to have the following four components, as a minimum. A hardware device to run the application such as a smartphone, tablet, laptop, or PC station. And it can be operated by Android, Apple's iOS, or Windows. A software app to execute all the actions that you want the R to do. And this is what we are trying to create in this video. Next, a target image to tell your app when, where, and how you want the R objects to appear on your device and blend into your view of reality. Some people like to use QR code as the target due to its easy to recognize geometrical features and uniqueness. You can also use any image that you define, such as your business card, as long as it contains distinct geometrical features and is compatible with the software development tool that you use. You can even use your own photo. Lastly, we need to have a digital image and define it as the R object you want to project once your device sees the target image. This digital image can be in 2D, 3D, or even higher dimension, if you include sound effects and other sensations. Each one of these components will have to work together at the same time when you are running your augmented reality application. Now let's see what materials we need to get before we start. Before we begin programming our app, we need to first download and install all the required software development tools. We are going to use Unity here as the main programming environment. We go to the Unity website. Check out the system requirements which I have mentioned earlier, before you download and install the software. Then, register a Unity personal account for yourself before you can download the software. Log in to your account after registration, and download the Unity Hub.
Unity Hub is a new product. It's like a service hub that allows you to connect to the software development tools that you need for your application. You can even add different versions of Unity to the same hub so you can get access to your old and new programming environments on demand. Now select the version of Unity you want to install. Then pick the support packages that are needed for the R app development. Since we are programming an Android app, we need to check the Android build support package. Make sure the Android SDK, NDK, and JDK are all checked. If you are interested in programming iOS apps, you may want to check iOS package too. If you are interested in code-based programming written in C++ language, you may want to check the intermediate language to C++ package here. Check off the license agreement acknowledgement as a standard procedure. Now your downloading process should be in progress. Depending on your network and computer speeds, this process may take between 30 minutes and an hour to complete. When the installation is done, you can see what support packages have been installed together with Unity. Next, we go to Vuforia's website to download the AR development tool called Vuforia Engine. Vuforia Engine provides a bunch of library files and resources that are designed for the development of AR apps. Again, before you can download the tool, you have to register a personal account with Vuforia. After you have finished with the registration and logged into your account, go to the Downloads tab at the top. Click on the first link from the top, to download the Vuforia engine that is intended for the Unity environment. Now you have just finished downloading all the required software development tools for your application. Next, go back to the Unity Hub and create a new project for your application. Click on the 3D icon as we are going to create a 3D AR object. Name the project first AR app and create the project. Now click on the Vuforia engine file you installed moments ago. The file should automatically be linked to Unity. So you just need to click on Import to add it to Unity. When all is done, you should be able to locate the AR camera feature, which allows us to create objects associated with AR. Before we proceed to the app programming, 
let's take a look at some basic features in Unity. First, let's take a look at how to set up the proper platform for your device. Here, you can choose platforms that are operated by Windows, iOS, Android, so on. Select Android as we are using the Android device. Then, click on the Game tab at the top. Select the screen size and orientation of your Android device. The screen size increases as you go from the top to the bottom of the list. The ones near the top are usually found for older phones which have smaller screens. The ones near the bottom are for the newer phones or tablets. Select 2560 by 1440 landscape for now. Next, create an AR object using the AR camera feature. Go ahead and delete the main camera which is not needed and is replaced by the AR camera for our application. To use the AR camera feature we need to get a license key from Vuforia. So we go back to the Vuforia website. Under License Manager, click on the Get Development Key. Give a name to the license key you want to create and confirm. Click on the newly created license key. Copy and paste the key to your project. Now right-click your mouse key on an empty space of the left panel. Select Image Target from Vuforia Engine to create a target to be used by your device to project the AR object. Then, go back to the Vuforia site. Under Target Manager, click on Add Database to prepare a space for uploading your image target. You can choose to run the uploaded image target from your device, cloud, or other platform. But for now, we will use our device. Enter a name for your image target and then click on Create. Now go into the database you have just created. Define the type of image target you need. You can define it as a single image, multi-surface image, curved image, or even a 3D object. Since we are using a business card as the image target, we will select the first option for now. Go look for the image file that you want to upload as the target. I have provided a link for you. Just download this file from the description below this video. Now, enter one as the unit width of the image. You can treat this as a scaling factor. Since you can always change its scale or size from within Unity, I normally leave this number as 1. After the image has been uploaded, wait about 10 seconds for it to process. If it still shows processing, just refresh your browser. Now check the rating of your image to see if it is recognized by the Vuforia engine. I normally use an image that gives 3 or more stars. Anything below that, you will need to change the image. Go into the image and check all the features that are detected by Vuforia's AR algorithm. 
these yellow dots represent all recognizable features. Make sure you select Unity Editor here before downloading the image target to your project. Then click on the downloaded file, and it will bring you back to Unity. Click on Import to import it to your project. Select Image Target and go to the panel on the right. Under Image Target Behavior, choose from Database as Type. Business Card is both Database and Image Target. Go to the scene and zoom into the origin. You should be able to locate the business card there. To zoom in or out, you can use the scroll wheel on your mouse. Enable the hand tool from the top. You can drag the view with your mouse while holding the left click button down. Holding the right click button of the mouse down allows you to change the aerial view projection. These features allow you to manipulate the view but not the object itself. To change the position of the object, you have to click on the Move tool. You can drag each of the axes to move the object in the X, Y, or Z direction. Or you can also use the input boxes to enter values of the X, Y, Z coordinates. To change the orientation of the object, you have to click on the Rotate tool. You can drag each of three circles to rotate the object about the X, Y, or Z axis. Or again, you can use the input boxes on the right to enter the exact values of rotation angles. Next, we are going to create a 3D model as the AR object. There are a few ways to do this. We can right-click on the image target and bring up the 3D features from the menu. We can create a cube for example. We can change its shape by changing the scale. Move and rotate it. We can add a sphere and merge the two together to form one single body. For 3D objects with simple geometry such as the Easter Egg Hunt game I created a couple months ago, you can use this method. Another way to create a 3D model is to use a third-party CAD software such as the one I have here. This allows you to create objects with higher complexity. You can import the model file to Unity as long as the file is compatible to the formats described on the Unity site.
I have a 3D model that was created with a CAD software earlier. This model is a prototype that we designed for a painter for his invention. You can download this, again from the description below this video. Now copy and paste this model file to the assets folder in Unity. Drag the file all the way to the image target on the left panel. The file should sit below the target image as it's dependent. And the model should sit right at the origin of the scene by default. Change the orientation to make it sit upright. If you don't like the color, you can change it. Click on the model file in Assets and select Material. Choose Create Material Preset from the list. Then pick the color you want. and drag the tray 1 icon with the new color onto the tray model. Now the model should be colored. You can apply the same technique to any 3D model in Unity. There is another approach to create a 3D model, that is, to get it from the Unity Asset Store. Asset Store is like the Apple, or Play Store which allows you to download all sorts of 3D models, as long as you have signed into your account. Select 3D here. You can see a bunch of 3D models. You can also search for the specific one you want. You can also choose the ones that are free. Let's pick Space Robot Kyle here for our application. Since I have already downloaded it before, I only need to import it now. In your case, you have to download first before import. Next, go find the robot model, and drag it onto the image target, so it becomes the target's dependent. You should see Robot Kyle standing at the origin right on top of the business card. And this is exactly what we want. We want the robot to pop right out from the top of the business card once your Android device sees the card. Except we prefer him to face us. So we turn him around using the rotation input box. Before we go test our program, we should save the project, which will save all the project configurations we defined earlier. We should also save the scene, which will save all the things we created in the scene that we want to show in our app. Note that we can have multiple scenes saved in the same project.
To test the program, we simply click the play button on top. Hold the business card in front of your computer's camera. You should see Robot Kyle pops out. Isn't it cool? This is how to test your app before deploying it. If you think Robot Kyle is a bit too out of proportion compared to the business card, you can go back and change its scale before building the app to deploy it. Doesn't he look better now? We go save the scene once again. Pull out your Android phone and go to settings. Click on about phone. Go to software information. Quick tap build number 7 times. Then it will ask you to enter your phone's password. Afterwards, the developer option should be enabled. Go to USB debugging and switch it on. Now you have configured your phone from an end user's to a developer's. Before we begin the building process, we will make one more change. We will disable the extended tracking feature, so when your phone camera moves away from the image target, the robot will disappear and will not stay active. So we will choose only the tracked option here. Then. We go save the scene, and connect your phone to the computer with a USB cable. Next, go to build settings. Add scene 1 as the scene you want to build. Make sure the Android platform is selected. Now click on build and run. Give a name to the built application file called APK or Android package. Android package is the same type of app you download from app stores. Now proceed to save the file and carry on the build process. This building process may take a few minutes. It takes longer the first time since Unity needs to compile and build everything from scratch. When you build the same application the next time, the building time will drop significantly.